Sand with Tyranitar and Excadrill, Salamence, Okadogi, and Coronite all did extremely well in the Global Challenge 2, and we're going to be trying out a team and seeing how well it can perform. This is a crazy sand concoction that did extremely well in the Global Challenge, placing in the 180th place with a 1739 rating. We have sand which is actually a pretty strong combination right now especially with snow that picking up recently having that sand stream is really nice to be able to break sashes on like our shifu being able to hit the articuno and the nine tails prevent aurora veil and really good typing just other than it's four times a week to dark and it's able to do a lot of damage with that choice band we have the excadrill that's extremely good into raging bolt one of the most common pokemon in the format strong against flutter main it's able to outspeed pretty much every non-speed booster flood main and can outspeed some of them depending on their speed stat if it was jolly excadrill you can outspeed pretty much every booster energy flutter main but this one is running a adamant nature to dish out as much damage as possible with that stellar terror allowing it to hit even harder with the high horsepowers the earthquakes and the iron heads which again extremely good in the raging bolt because most of them do run the terra fairy so if you are able to either hit them super effectively with or without terra is nice next is the return of salamence a flying type that is pairing well with the intimidate and rocky helmet being a great defensive option for water shifus and other pokemon that usually want to hit excadrill that rocky helmet being really nice chip damage and provides the speed control with the tailwind and it pairs well nicely with Excadrill as their type synergy is pretty nice with Steel being able to resist Fairy as well as Dragon. While Salamence able to take Water and Fire as well as Ground type coverage being immune to it really nicely. That Tailwind support going to help out the Excadrill. It make it even faster if you want to bring the Sand Mode but also can function without it. We also have the Assault Vest Okadogi. This one's to scare away Intimidate with the Guard Dog ability able to dish out a lot of damage and that upper hand a new tech that it does have to prevent fake outs and other priority moves from affecting you for one turn can be a really nice trick that can catch opponents off guard we have the core Knight, this one running a bulky wiki berry set with brave bird u-turn roost and taunt mainly for specific matchups where you want to deny trick room and you're able to go for u-turn and pivot out into for instance your excadrill your tyranitar safely it's a pretty strong pivot option. And then finally, the Amoongus, which is a nice pair because you can pair it up with the Okadogi, go for the Pollen Puffs, while Okadogi usually able to tank a lot of moves in the format. Go for Spores for setup for Excadrill Tyranitar to come in later. Just a lot of strong options with that Clear Smog 2 that helps out against Ndozo. If you'd like to check out the details of the team and the creator, they'll be linked in the description down below. Iron Hands, Fluttermane, Hisuian Arcanine, Iron Bundle, the Wellspring Ogre Pond, and King Gambit. Huh. That's a really unique team. Okadogi looks really good against it. I do... Salamence, not... I mean, Salamence is good against the Wellspring Ogre Pond. Coronite can actually give them trouble, but I'm not Iron Defense Body Press. I think I really like the Okadogi. Amoongus is pretty good. Like a lot of pressure. They de they definitely don't handle the Okadogi well, so that's definitely my game plan. Excadrill and Tyranitar are really good cleanups if I position them correctly. So I think those are the four. Coronite doesn't do too much because I only have Brave Bird and U-turn for damage moves, and it only really helps out against the Wellspring and maybe the Flutter, but that's it. Salamence. Salamence can put in work. It has Intimidate, but I don't think it's uh 100% uh, necessity here. Let's see what they decide to lock in with. Because if they lead to soon Arcanine, they always get threatened by the Okadogi. Okadogi is going to be really good here because they don't exactly have a way to one shot it or do super heavy damage to it. I think it has to be like Choice Bandit Arcanine and Specs Flutter or really heavy damage. Maybe the Ogre Pond Terras, which then maybe I should have brought Salamence over Tyranitar, but I do really want the Earthquake pressure in the end game. So let's see how this is going to perform. A lot of this is just protecting the Okadogi. If I had the Rage Powder, I Rage Powder. It should be fine. If they give me the Guard Dog boost, I will be able to probably one-shot everything on their team. Other than maybe Iron Hands. We're going to see Fluttermane Iron Hands, which is pretty reasonable. And I will lead Okadogi plus Amoongus. And I'll just go for Spore Gunk Shot into the Fluttermane. So that's what exactly we're going to click. Actually, I could go for upper hand if I want to. 
But it does fail if the Iron Hands doesn't go for... Actually, no, I'd rather Gunk Shot. I could Upper Hand to prevent the Fake Out, but if they don't Fake Out, then it's just better to Spore, always. Well, Gunk Shot and Spore. Looks like they were in Booster Energy Flutter. Wild Charge, I guess, into Moonblast. If they really, really want to commit heavily, sure. Oh, it's Trick Room Flutter Main. Focus Sash? I have a feeling. Okay. Alrighty then. <laughs> they did have some tricks, I suppose, with that uh, Iron Hands. Spore into the Flutter Main. Oh, what the heck, man. <laughs> <laughs> Belly drum iron hands. I don't think they can knock on a Moongus though. I'm going into Excadrill and I'm going to click clear smog in case they're Terra Grass. Well, I could gunk shot cover it, but I'd rather just clear smog and get a safety measure here. This could be Rock Slide. This could be Earthquake. Still feel like I'm in an okay spot. Then I just go Tyranitar and click Earthquake, I guess, the next turn. Yeah, definitely not what I anticipated. Bring out the Excadrill. We are going to see a Terra. I'm not sure if this is Terra Okidogi or if this is Terra on the Flutter. But probably, uh, I mean Iron Hands or the Flutter, but it should be Iron Hands. Yeah, they do have Terra Grass. Okay, that makes sense to me. I could have gung shot it. I really could have, but I don't think it's necessary. And if they go for Protect Trick Room, then they're screwed. They wake up, they go for Dazzling Gleam, which is unfortunate because I might lose Excadrill here, which is not great. Get a crit on Excadrill. Brain Punch. Okay. Which... That is not a problem. I'm pretty sure. I do lose Excadrill, which is a really shame, so I do have to really rely on the Okadogi to finish up, but I'm really glad I did clear a smog here. Yeah. So, that change? We go out into... Uh, Okadogi. And we're going to click Spore into Flutter and I guess uh, Gunk Shot into the Iron Hands. So that is what we're going to click. Is there any Terra that's super good here? Not really. I'm just going to Gunk Shot and I'm going to Spore the Flutter main because I might as well. If they go for an attack, that's fine. I don't know what Flutter is. Just going to go for Dazzling Gleam, which is okay. Because I can build up momentum by just like the flutter just unable to do anything. So I think this is perfectly acceptable. And I always knock out the flutter with a turn of sand. So I'm not really too concerned about it at the moment. We're just going to gunk shot and pollen puff the Okadogi. Because flutter is just not doing anything. So we go for the pollen puff and get back to full. And we have chances that the flutter main just is not able to move. For multiple turns, just buying Okadogi more time to actually do anything. Hopefully, that's doing something will not be missing gunk shots, but we'll find out. It's not too bad if I miss one. Okay. I'm glad I pollen puffed. All right. <laughs> so, as you can see, there's a reason why I'm playing it more safer this way just because I have the ability to have momentum I will go for another one of those combinations if they want to protect that's fine I do the same play again of pollen puffing and sporing it looks like we only get a one turn sleep which is unfortunate for me they're getting pretty lucky right you can't be serious <laughs> you can't be serious Gabe You can't be serious, game. Uh, um, hmm. just gonna keep pollen puffing. That's a gleam. I'm just taking so much unnecessary damage. I land a third one, thankfully. Goodbye, Iron Hands. All right. The Iron Hands is eliminated. Flutter me. So it's a 3v3. My Moongus ended up taking a lot more health. 
then I would have liked the Okadogi is not at full, which I don't like either, but still have tools, I suppose. Let's see who they bring out next. They also wasted their Terra. So everything is just directing King Gambit, uh, Iron Bundle, Arcanine. Yeah, that's perfect. Because they will give me the Guard Dog. And I will just Drain Punch the, his, the Arcanine. So I am going to go for a Drain Punch and I will just Rage Powder away of Choice Bandit Flare Blitz potential. Pick up for rocks, I just don't flinch. The rage powder. Got some gleam. Go back with the citrus. I guess the question is what the remaining mon will be is also a big factor. Flare blitz, okay, so I don't have to worry about rocks. I flinch. I could have tear the Amoongus maybe to survive that. I don't think it's worth to tear it though. Uh, getting that recovery from the Hisuian Arcanine is going to be fantastic. Because now that I don't have Pollen Puff anymore, I need all the health that I can get with the Okadogi. So we are back to near full. And Fluttermane is going to go down to the Sand the following turn, unless they have a weather changing move. So I'm going to come down huge to like, what is the final Mon? What is your final Mon? King Gambit, Ogre Pond. All right. If that's the case, I just Terror with Tyranitar. And I'm going to go for a... <laughs> Did I even risk a gunk shot? I don't know if Ogre Pomp attacks. That's the thing. Nah, actually, no. I Drain Punch here. And I go for a Terra Flying, Terra Blast. Yeah, it should be fine. That was going to be forfeit. Whew. I mean... Was it winnable? I think it was if I misplay and don't click gunk shot. Or, and if I don't have a... A tear on Tyranitar, it might be winnable for the opponent, especially when they're Ivy Cudgel Crit, but <laughs> got a little bit ridiculous right there. They get a little bit ridiculous, but thankfully, Okadogi hit finally hits a gunk shot, and yeah, <laughs> Tornadus, Fluttermane, Chi, Landris, Fairy, and Form, Raging Bolt, and the well, Spring Ogre Pond. Other than the Landris, I feel like matchup wise, it's pretty strong for me. I just got to figure out how to make sure that the Landris is always in check. Amoongus is pretty decent here. Got to make sure that I have the right tools. I do really like the Okadogi. And I think Torn is actually kind of annoying to deal damage to if it's not Tyranitar. I think I want to lead Excadrill plus the Okadogi because I'm trying to figure about what the leads are that threaten me. Like Okadogi handles pretty much everything well other than like a Chiyu lead, which uh, Excadrill pretty much handles. Salamence is good in the back. Tyranitar is good. The Excadrill pressures like a Torn Flutter lead. I think that's the way I want to approach this. I need Excadrill so I can handle the Raging Bolt. As well as, like, it's a good answer to Chiyu. Okidogi is a good lead because it pressures some decent damage. Maybe Amoongus might have been better here, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Because I also need a backup answer to Wellspring Ogre Pond, which uh, Salamence is nice against Landers and Wellspring Ogre Pond. Those are the main reasons I'm bringing it. But yeah, they're going to bring Landers for sure. And imagine they bring Chiyu because... Either one or two of Raging Bolt in order to beat the Corviknight. So let's find out. Landris plus the Ogre Pond. All right. So this is a really good lead for me here as I will lead my Ogadogi and my Excadrill. So it could have been better, but I do think that this is just a safe Salamence switch and a Drain Punch. Or do I want to knock off the... I could knock off here actually the Landris. But I like the idea of drain punching the landers. Getting that chip in the landers is actually really nice. And getting Salamence in. The Salamence in Intimidates. And the Tailwind the following turn seems really nice. I don't really think I want to tear it at Okadogi, but we'll see. Bring out the Salamence, get the Intimidate off into the landers. So let's see if they're going for Earthquake or not. They go for Spiky Shield, which I'm not too surprised. I was wondering if they were going to go for Ivy Cudgel or not because they do risk the gunk shot. 
it is going to be an earthquake and earthquake is going to be an interesting one here because if it is a choice locked landris then they have to switch out the next turn into like torn or something that's not choice banded that did very little actually drain punch going to come out into the landris okay really ideal i'm able to heal back should be in a pretty comfortable spot to just go for a gunk shot attempt into the slot and i think just tailwind now the wellspring ogre pond because wellspring ogre pond will go down to the gunk shot a uh, torn would go down to the gunk shot which is what i'm trying to catch if they do go for the torn play if lander switches out i think it's pretty acceptable because then torn has to go for a turn of tailwind i still have a salamence around that's pretty safe if they decide to bring back in the lando and I've gotten damage in Orlando, which means Draco Meteor might be able to knock it out, depending on the item. And if they stay in, they're going to give me a gunk shot into the Wellspring Ogre Pond, which is fantastic. And I do land, so goodbye, Wellspring Ogre Pond. That's huge for my sand mode in the back. What are you going for with the Landris? Stomp Tantrum. Okay. Able to do a lot to Okadogi, but I've done the damage I needed to do. All right. Raging Bolt coming out. Hmm. I live a Thunderclap because I'm a Salt Vest. Do I want a Draco Meteor Drain Punch, I suppose? If they switch in Flutter, that'd be bad, but I don't think they're switching Flutter in. Knockoff isn't a bad play. I would like the health, but maybe the health is too greedy. Because I, because I've done pretty much what I needed to do with Okadogi for most of the game. I guess I will just knock off the Landers, and I'm gonna go for a Draco Meteor into Landers as well. Because it was like torn in the back. That means it's just Raging Bolt, which I'm perfectly happy with. We're gonna see a Terra come out, so let's see if this is Raging Bolt. All right, what are you tearing into? Terra Fairy, so it's vulnerable to Exit Drill, and that's pretty nice. Maybe they were fearing the Drain Punch. Draco Meteor. No Thunderclap, actually. So I am able to get the Draco Meteor. Is that a Salt Vest? It might be. No, it's Barry. Wait, that Barry might allow it to live to knock off. Let's see. It's going to be close. Oh, it did. That's actually bad. Because Stomping Tantrum into the Okadogi. We'll pick up the Knockout. Sure. I guess this isn't too bad. Okay, I was like, okay, is it going to be the animation thing or is it it's going to be that, which is fine. Okay. So we confirm it's not Scarf Landorus. I do get the wetter up. Life Orb, Raging Bolt. Okay. So I still have Terra. I think I should be in an okay spot. I'm pretty sure that Rock Slide plus Iron Head is so hard for my opponent to switch into now. I'll double check on what they could possibly switch into. Flutter, Chi, Torn. Yeah, like... <laughs> I don't like their odds, buddy. Let's go for an Iron Head and let's go for a Rock Slide. I will risk a Rock Slide on Landers because I think I have to. I need the pressure to double up on Torn and I think I want to... I want to lock in Rock Slide against a Chi, Flutter, Main, Torn in the back. Are you kidding me? Like, of course I'm going to lock into that. <laughs> uh, if we miss, uh, it's going to be a fortune, but like, that's how it goes sometimes. We do have to hit our moves. So let's see what they're going to click here because they could protect with both if they have protect. Stall out, turn to tailwind. And then it's going to come down to like what the last mon is. I have enough turns of sand, so I'm pretty much always fine against the Landris. Unless Torn comes out and is able to either live the rock slide or is able to reset wetter. But we are going to see the swap out here into the Chi. Okay, so the Chi is just going down the rock slide. And uh, Thunderclap is not going to matter too much here. Oh, they didn't even go for Thunderclap, so... Goodbye, Raging Bolt. Maybe they were going to go for, like, a crit? Like, I thought maybe they would try to go for a crit, but, um... They were minus... T they were minus two, even with the crit, ignoring that, and the Beats of Ruin, I don't think. Uh... Okay, we do hit the Rock Slide, so that should be game. Because <laughs> I don't think Landers can stall out four turns of sand. If they get four turns of sand, it's still okay, because, I, A, I have a Focus Dash on the Excadrill... And I still have my Terra on the Tyranitar, so I can go for a Terra flying if I really need to. So 
ended up having a nice position. Okidogi really, really able to put on a lot of pressure against this. Got a really good turn one and was able to keep up the momentum. Salamence, they were just in a really awkward spot. They didn't bring Tailwind, which is really nice because that means I was able to keep, uh, get a speed advantage and maintain it for the rest of the game. And it couldn't have worked out perfectly. <laughs> Snow with Iron Bundle, Nine Tails, the Okay, Roy Moon, Iron Hands, Fluttermane, and Urshifu. Mm. Okadogi is really good in this game, and I mean really good in this game. So I will bring the Okadogi. I think Amoongus is always good against these kinds of teams. Uh, Tyranitar Excadrill probably for sure in the back because Excadrill good for the Iron Hands and the Tyranitar is just of course against the snow mode. Fantastic. I'm kind of curious on what the items are. If it's going to be booster on the bundle or if it's going to be one of those choice specs ones with the powerful blizzards. The Roaring Moon is going to be kind of weird. Actually, Roaring Moon should always be booster, right? So it should be probably specs on the bundle, I would say. Because it would make more sense for it to be booster Roaring Moon than anything. But our Shifu Iron Hands will lead, which this is perfectly fine. I have an Okadogi and an Amoongus, so I'm pretty happy about this. I'm just going to go for a Drain Punch. I, I could upper hand if I want to. Do I want to go for it? Not really. Like, I don't think upper hand is necessary in this situation. So let's go for a Drain Punch into their Shifu. And I guess we'll Spore the... They have a Grass type? Yeah, they don't have a Grass type, so I can just Spore the or Shifu Slab. Iron Hands attacks, so be it. We're going to see a Terra come out from my opponent. Is it going to be Terra Grass on the Iron Hands, which would be super risky? We're going to see the Urshifu Terra. Terra Dark. Okay, so they're probably just trying to blow back the Amoongus turn one. Okay. That's fine. Make out into Okadogi. Pretty sure. Like a crit, sure. We could blow. We should be able to tank one, unless this uh, is a very specific... Ooh, that was Choice Band or Black Glasses, something like that. It's definitely a boosting item. I don't know whether it is or not, but... Oof. Okay, beautiful. We're able to get a Spore off into the Urshifu. I think it is probably Choice Band. I'm going for a Drain Punch into the Urshifu, and I'm probably just going to... I'm going to go Tyranitar. Do I want to go Tyranitar or do I want to go Excadrill? I think this is Heavy Slam. Keeping the Sash might... Actually, no, I should just go Excadrill, actually. Yeah, I should just go Excadrill. I don't think they're Drain Punching the Moongus unless they don't actually have a move that can hit it. We're going to see the Urshifu Retreat, which is fine. Because it hasn't taken a sleep turn. Iron Bundle? Sure, I'll take. I'll get a beautiful Drain Punch off in Iron Bundle. The reason I'm switching out Moongus is just keep that regenerative health. It's good for hands, so let's just see what they decide to go for afterward. Bring out the Excadrill, get a Drain Punch off into Iron Bundle. Focus Sash, it looks like, on the Iron Bundle? Yeah, it's a Focus Sash on the Iron Bundle, which means I could go Tyranitar if I need to. Okay. Heavy Slam does come out into the Excadrill. Does actually do some pretty good damage, but pretty acceptable here. Now, I have some choices. I can go for a Drain Punch into Iron Bundle. I could go for a Gunk Shot. I like the idea of just Drain Punching the Iron Bundle. Hmm, Blizzard is just... Blizzard damage I'm just scared of. You have to be scared of me switching Tyranitar. But they're probably just Drain Punching the Excadrill slot. I think I'm just going to go for a Drain Punch into Iron Bundle and I'm swapping into Moongus. If I lose a Moongus, so be it. But uh, that means they lose the Iron Bundle, which is actually a pretty big loss here because it is one of their biggest threats to Okadogi offensively. So bring out the Amoongus. They go for an Icy win, sure. I'll take that. Okay. Get a crit on Okadogi again. Uh, I don't know why Okadogi is liking getting crit in this game, but uh, please stop. Amoongus going to be able to absorb that Drain Punch. I can't really pivot, unfortunately, the Amoongus anymore, but should be pretty acceptable. At this point, I guess Ninetales is going to come in and go for Aurora Veil, huh? Unless they don't have it in the back for some reason, which would be acceptable. So this is... Oh, Moon. Okay. They haven't teared yet. 
going to be the t booster energy speed. No attack. Okay. That's scary. I'm going for a gunk shot in the roaring moon to cover for a Terra, and I'm just going to go for a rage powder. I can't really risk. I'm going for a drain punch here into my Amoongus. They could protect the roaring moon, but we'll see. If they do, I think it's probably acceptable. Wow, they didn't tear at all. Oh, wait, they tear the for Shifu. I keep forgetting these. Uh, they go for a Tailwind, which is fine. Heavy Slam into the Amoon will pick up the Naka. I'm actually surprised they didn't go for a Drain Punch there. Okay. Gunk Shot into the Roy Moon. Wow, that's really big damage, actually. <laughs> Hmm. I think the place to go Excadrill and then go into Tyranitar. Yeah. Because Okadogi is like the game plan for the win. Unless they double up the Okadogi slot with Drain Punch. But that would allow Excadrill to put on a lot of pressure against Iron Hands. I just don't think that'd be the case. I'm just going to protect the Excadrill. Trying to bait the knockoff into that, uh, bait the Drain Punch in that slot and uh, deter away from the Tyranitar coming in. I don't think you're Drain Punching the Tyranitar, but we'll see. Probably just going to knock off the Exit Drill and just... No, you'd probably... We'll see. Let's... Acrobatics. Okay, yeah, they focused around. Drain Punch going to come out into the Exit Drill. Nice. I don't need my assault vest in this game, right? I don't. Hmm. Now the question is what order? I could lose both Pokemon here if I'm not careful. I don't think I ever need to tear Okadogi. I think I'd rather tear the Tyranitar, if anything. I could see them anticipating that and trying to switch. Hmm. I would prefer them never be able to get a Drain Punch healing, though. So I think actually the play is probably just a Terra Blast, the Iron Hands, and go for the high horsepower attempt into the Iron Hands as well. The Roaring Moon doesn't switch out, which means it should faint to Sand this upcoming turn, and that's kind of what my goal was for the Okadogi remaining. So we'll find out. Yeah, that was a mistake. I think Drain Punch Oko the <laughs> Roaring Moon, so. Uh... Made this game a bit harder for myself. Knockoff going to finish off the Excadrill. I wasn't switching into Okadogi. It's also a win con, so I don't really want to. Uh, we're going to see Drain Punch. Yep. Because they wanted the recovery. I don't really need my Terra for um, Okadogi because I'm going to choose not to. So I'd rather just Terra Blast. The Iron Hands. And in case they did go out into the... Uh, into the Urshifu... Uh, High Horsepower probably picked up the knockout with Terra Blast even after the Drain Punch healing if they targeted the Excadrill slot. So yeah, Roaring Moon goes down and now Okadogi plus Tyranitar. Sand is up. Should be enough to win this game, I'd imagine. I'm going out into Okadogi. Maybe I should just Drain Punch double up the... I think I... Dra Actually, no, I should Drain Punch double up the Iron Hands. If I think it's Band or Shifu, I do think that Terra Blast is 100% to call. Don't have to risk anything. I think I just go for the Drain Punch into Iron Hands. Or Shifu going to stay fast asleep. It's the first turn. All Charge going to come out. So they're taking Recoil. This plus Sand plus Drain Punch, I'm hoping gets to Iron Hands. Iron Hands is pretty bulky though. But I think Wall Charge was like the strongest move that I was worried about into Okadogi. And also like once I Drain Punch the Urshifu, I'm getting a lot of health back. So I'd rather save that health for when I need it. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, it looks like it's going down to Sand, I think. Right? Okay, I wasn't off on my map there. Okay, nice. So Iron Hands goes down. Now we can Drain Punch the Urshifu. And unless Urshifu has some crazy move here <laughs> that can knock out Okadogi. I should be in a completely okay spot. Let's see. Wakes up. Iron head. Oh, they're going to try to flinch me down. That's one.
All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good thing I did not have to play that. Sure, I probably could have drain punched Earth Shifu. Like, it might have been better to target down the Earth Shifu there. But I was just worried about, like, how much a wild charge was really doing to the Okidogi. But I think I would have been fine regardless. Especially after a recall, I think I would have been all right. But then again. Nah, it might have still been always better to target down the Earth Shifu. Get the drain punch KO if I can. <laughs> Fluttermane, Urshifu, Landris Incarnate, Reelaboom, Incineroar, Raging Bolt. Okay, pretty much a general balance team. Ogadogi loves facing these kinds of teams. You gotta watch out for the Landris though. Landris is a pretty problematic Pokemon when it comes to this team. If it's Taunt on one of Fluttermane or the Landris, it's gonna be a bit of an issue. It could be Water Shifu. I can't tell if it's Water or Dark Urshifu on the team. It could be either. I would have to proceed with caution if that's the case. I think the play here would be Okadogi. Am I bring Corviknight? I guess I could bring Corviknight in this matchup. Then again, if I bring Corviknight, that means no Excadrill because I want to bring a Moongus. Salamence is really good, I think. It's good against Incineroar. It's good against Reelaboom. I think Salamence plus Excadrill. Hornet's not bad in a matchup, though. It's really not, but I just don't think it's worth it. <laughs> I just don't think it's worth it unless it's a, maybe a Trick Room team or very specific stuff that I can't really break through like Registeel, but let's see what we can do. Fluttermane Landorus. Okay, that's not too surprising. Versus Amoongus plus Okadogi. So going to be the booster energy speed booster. I think my play here is to always just go for a gunk shot into the flutter main and just rage powder the attack away from Okadogi. As long as it's not Sans here storm, I should be fine. If I get rid of flutter main, that's a huge answer to Salamence gone. And then I can actually pivot into Salamence afterward. Ooh, don't tell me this is double protects the scout. Oh, is this actually taunt on the... This might be taunt then. On the Landers. Oh, sub. Ooh, good play. Covers four. Unless I went super hard committed, I it was not working out. Good play on their part. All right. Yeah, sub is not going to be easy to break through. I think I probably have to commit a Terra to beat this, unfortunately. Yeah, I think I do. I'm going to go for my Terra. I'm going to go for a... My Gunk Shot here? Actually, no. I'd probably want to knock off the Landers and just go for a Spore into the Landers as well. Go for that Terra. Avoid, hopefully, the Earth Power. If they have Taunt on the Flutter Main, this is going to get really ugly, but let's see. But yeah, we will Terra Flying here. We're forced to, unfortunately, against the Landers. They go for an Icy Wind. Perfect. Uh, we even dodge with Okidogi even better. Interesting to see Icy Wind here. Okay. And Earth Power into Okidogi. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I get a knockoff, should break the sub. And then we get a huge spore off into the Landris. And then we can knock off the Landris' item the next turn, because I'm not like too fearful of Fluttermane. So this is excellent. Alright, that's a huge, huge start. I'm gonna go for a knockoff into the Landris and I guess the question is what am I doing with Fungus? I guess I'm just gonna spore. Do I spore here or do I just clear smog? I probably just spore the flutter. Landers gonna say sleep. The flutter name protects. So I wonder if it has taunt. Oh, they just go for a moon blast, which is fine. Okay, that's actually really good for me. Because I get a knockoff into the Landers, get rid of that life orb. So its damage output is very, very much reduced. The flutter main also gonna be taking the sleep turn now. 
Okay, excellent. I'm going to go for another knockoff into the Landris. And a... Actually, should I? I should probably just Drain Punch here. And just Pollen Puff the Okidogi to make sure that I'm healthy. Then I take his first team, first turn to sleep with Fluttermane. Landers going to wake up as long as it doesn't sub here. Okay, they protected. So they tend to double protect. So this works out perfectly well because I'm able to get free healing with my Okidogi. And then next turn, I could double up the Landers once again. If knockoff breaks the sub, I don't know if knockoff will break the sub. I guess we'll find out together. <laughs> but getting the healing back is nice. We will go for a knockoff and we are going to go for a spore. Let's see if Landers goes for a switch, if it goes for a substitute again. Because getting rid of Landers is really nice for my Excadrill. And right now, the speed boost or Flutter is just not threatening that much damage output against the Pokemon that I have. So we'll see what they decide to lock in afterward. But they don't exactly have the best switches to a knockoff or drain punch plus a spore like knockoff spore covers every switch it just depends on if knockoff breaks the sub we do see two first turn wakes i see wing gonna come out again all right although without the i'm like pretty sure without the life orb you're just not doing enough yeah like that's nowhere near enough i am able to get a knockoff in the landers i'm able to get a spore off into the landers and then I think I get to Pollen Puff my Okidogi and just Gunk Shot the Flutter. I'm really building up the damage here, but the uh, question is, like, is it enough for whatever they have in the back? Oh, we Pollen Puff. Because Amoongus is getting low, which is something I do have to acknowledge. We also are weak to Raging Bolt in the back, but it's, that's why we brought, we kept our Excadrill around. So let's see. If they protect Flutter, it's fine. I get a free Pollen Puff. If they trade off here, it's perfectly acceptable. I get back to like 75% with Okidogi, I'd imagine. And get a KO, which would be huge. But let's see what their other two are. I see wind again. All right, so I'll be back to like 80%, which is nice. I'm trying to figure out. Okay, if it's Bolt, I can spore the Bolt and knock off the Landers. I think no problem. Landers takes his first turn. Gunshot missed. Unfortunate. How it goes sometimes. Get back to a reasonable about amount. Yeah, just keep missing these uh, gunk shots. But, or actually, no, that's the first one I went for because it protected the other one. Hmm. Unfortunately, Amoongus is taking a big beating here. I guess now I just knock off the Landris and I spore the Flutter, I suppose. Because I'm healthy enough, and if they protect, yeah, they're going to stall out another turn, which is fine. And then next turn, I can do the same thing. Okay, Landris not waking up, so I'll be pretty healthy. I think this is pretty reasonable. I guess, like, I could have got Pollen Puff off. For a little bit more health for the Okidogi to be a full, but I, I do think that this is still a pretty acceptable position. The question again is who is coming out after this turn? Is it going to be Raging Bolt or is it going to be something else? It's Raging Bolt. I'm curious if Icy Wind Dragon Pulse will get the knockout uh, or Shifu coming out. Okay. Darker Shifu. Hmm. Gotta be careful. Uh, I'm adamant Excadrill, right? Yeah, I think the safest play is to gunk shot the Fluttermane still and spore the Fluttermane since it's protected the last turn. We're probably going to see a Terra Dark Wicked Blow. The question is... Does it pick up a knockout on who they're doubling? I don't know if they're doubling the or Shifu or if they're doubling the... Or if they're doubling the Okidogi or they're doubling the Amoongus. Probably the Amoongus, but we'll see. I see wind. Okay. I don't know. If you're going for the Terra Dark Wicked Blow, I'd imagine you're turning down the Okidogi. 
because you would probably just regular wicked blow no they did target the amoongus okay just to make sure that the amoongus went down here which is fine all right amoongus goes down we're gonna see what the final is please hit okay <laughs> really good okay flutter main goes down excellent i think the play is always excadrill or do i want to go salamance I think it's always Excadrill. Incineroar is the last. I think we're in a good spot. This is going to be super close. They're going to fake out and go probably fake out Excadrill. I don't know who they're going to fake out. I think my play is always just to go Salamence though and Earthquake. Yeah, Earthquake. Plus switching out. If they double my Excadrill, I don't think it's the end of the world. I think it really depends on A, does the UKO the Okadogi with Wicked Blow at the range I'm at, which is a big, big if. They go for Fake Out. Yep, they target Excadrill. It makes sense. Wicked Blow into should be... Oh, they target Excadrill too. They completely disrespected the Okadogi. All right. Or maybe they read the Salamence come in. Again, I think it's going to come down to do we survive with Okadogi on the Urshifu. But I am just going to air slash the Urshifu. And go for a Drain Punch into Incineroar. Oh, that's right. I could have upper hand the Incineroar. But I don't think it was worth it to take a Wicked Blow. I'm going to Drain Punch the Incineroar. I'm going to air slash. This covers a Protect play from the Urshifu gets me some health unless they flare bits again which i think is acceptable i guess i could tail and drain punch too if i really really want to but i think okadoki survives the wicked blow the reason i didn't go for it before was the fake out damage but we'll see i also have the air slash flinch chance okay wicked blow maybe i'm overestimating okadoki but we'll see <sighs> i'd be overestimating okadoki i should tail and drain punch i guess Hmm. Knock off. Still very winnable game. Cause I have Draco Meteor. I do think Draco Meteor is probably the best move. Do they protect parting? Let's see. I think I'd rather just go for Draco Meteor now. They sucker punch, that's fine. Yeah, Tail and Drain Punch was probably like a lot more reasonable. Yeah, they do detect. I think they should be parting then. I could beat Incineroar theoretically with Roof Stalling, but uh, I don't know. Oh, they went for a knockoff again. I don't know how much the sucker punch into another knockoff does. I do have roost. I think I gotta go for Draco Meteor. I could roost this turn, but I think stalling this out is not exactly a great factor. Let's see. Maybe I did have to roost. I no, I'm fine. Assuming I hit the Draco. Perfect. All right. Okay. Now we're going to play an Incineroar versus a Salamence endgame. I am minus two special attack. They're minus one attack. My item is lost. A Flare Blitz. Okay. I'm able to tank it. Nice. They take recoil too, which is beautiful. All right. <laughs> let's see if we can... Let's see if we can make some magic happen with uh, Salamence Roost stalling this. We should have enough HP to stall out. I'm pretty sure, like, if I keep air slashing, I also have flinch chances, too. Nice. And we roost one more time, and then we start going for the attacks. As we have... Six more roosts. They keep going for Flare Blitz over knockoff. I guess they're trying to get the burn. But yeah, I just go for air slash now. Yeah, I have six roosts. I think because of how much recoil they're taking, plus the air slash chip will be building up over time. I think I win this end game, but there are like a lot of things that can happen. 
But yeah, as you can see, we already have done some pretty decent damage to Incineroar just because they've been Flare Blitz shipping their recoil. I'm surprised they're not knockoffing. Citrus Berry is a bit annoying on this one, but okay. And again, we have Air Slash flinch chances like that one. Yeah, exactly. So Air Slash, again, this could have probably just been one if I just Tailwinded Rain Punch, which is probably the better option looking back at it. But I didn't think that... I guess I should not underestimate our Shifu. But Okie Dokie's decently bulky. Thought it was enough. I do have to miss chances too. But I don't think it's like too big of a deal. Okay. Air slash. Fast forward probably this until something actually happens. And I went on timer because they can't timer my Salamence. They're going to party shot stall, which makes sense, but I don't know. Like, I think I'm doing more damage and I have more RNG chances, although I'm not power pointed up, which actually is a kind of concerning. Although one crits from me screws them over while they can't crit screw me over. Oh, gonna be forfeited. Little mess ups, little mess ups. Specifically the Tailwind, I completely forgot that I did have the option to go for Tailwind just to make my Okidogi faster since I reset all the speed draws by switching out earlier. And then I would have been able to get a Drain Punch off before the Arashifu got the attack off. Granted, luckily Salamence was enough power to win. They didn't go for Parting Shot, which I don't know if the party shot saved their Shifu because I think Draco Meteor might have still had enough power to pick up the knock on their Shifu even at minus one. But uh, yeah. All right, let's go to the games. In game one, Belly Drum Iron Hands was definitely a trick, but the clear smog on Amoongus was huge to help while Okidogi was eventually able to land the gung shots while my opponent had very little damage output against the Okidogi. In game two, Okidogi and Salamence were amazing against the Landers and Ogre Pond lead, where I was able to have a boosted Okidogi under tail and able to do massive damage and set up for my sand mode to clean up in the back. In game three, other than the mistake of not going for the Drain Punch into the Roy Moon, which could have ended badly, Okidogi was able to threaten heavily getting three knockouts with the sand chip finishing off the Roy Moon. Could have been four if I remember the Drain Punch as they did Terra earlier. In game four, Lead was a bit awkward, and the turn one wasn't a great start, but the Terrifying Okidogi was able to tank the lead hits with Pollen Puff support healing it. Only huge mistake was not going for the tail one with the Salamence to outspeed their Shifu and getting Drain Punch healing, as I thought Okidogi was able to survive the Wicked Blow at the range it was at, which it did not. <laughs> I really thought that this was going to be more of an Excadrill Tyranitar Sand Mode. I remember we using it in a previous episode and it was able to do extremely well in that video. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure you go check it out. But Okidogi, a Pokemon that's fallen off quite recently and it was able to do a lot of work. Okidogi was probably the MVP of this video. And then Salamence was also a really nice support option, which I was not anticipating. Especially with like all the flutter mains, I would scares about a Salamence taking a too much damage with just how much it suffered in this generation. But no, it's been a pretty good option. The Amoongus Okidogi lead was stronger than I thought. A Coronite we didn't really get to see, unfortunately, but I do think it was very specific matchups that we just did not encounter. So if you'd like to try out the team for yourself, hopefully the rental code is still on your screen, but you can check out the details of the team in the creator down below in the description. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more VGC content as always.